there's an old controversy in ethics as to when you're judging an action, whether you should judge it by its motivation or by its consequences. The Buddha's answer to that question is both. You look at what mind state it's coming from, and you also look at what impact it has. What you have to be careful is sometimes something seems to be coming from a good mind state, but it's kind of a bad impact, in which case you have to go beyond simply having good intentions. You have to make them skillful. In other words, you have to be willing to learn from past mistakes and apply that knowledge the next time you act. And for him, this principle applies not only to external actions, but also to the actions of the mind, in other words, your thoughts. When we settle the mind down in meditation, it's not simply to watch what's going on in the present moment. We want to give the mind the solidity to remember lessons from the past when they're necessary, and also to be willing to resist old habits when you've learned that they're not skillful. The concentration gives you strength, keeps you grounded in the present. But remember, the present isn't everything. The present it has its own input, in other words, in terms of your intentions right now. But it's also got things coming in from the past, and it's going to have an impact on the future. And you want to take all of that into consideration. It's when the mind is stable and still that it can have that larger view. Not simply jump for what the immediate impulse is. Because, as after all the Buddha said, there's some things that feel good in the present moment, but are going to have bad consequences in the future. Some things that feel good, but will have good consequences. Things that feel bad in the present moment will have bad consequences in the future, and also things that feel bad, but will have good consequences. And you actually have to go for the consequences. Those are the means by which you judge things. There's one spot where he says, if leading the whole way life has you crying so the tears are bathing your cheeks, it's still worth sticking with it, because the long-term consequences are worth it. When the Buddha divided his thoughts into two sorts, that was the point where he first got on the path, he looked both at where the thoughts were coming from and where they were going. Thoughts that were motivated, he said, by sensuality, in other words, our fascination with thinking about sensual pleasures and planning for sensual pleasures. Thoughts motivated by sensuality, by ill will, and by harmfulness. He realized that those were going to have bad consequences, simply because of the motivation. That was enough to tell you right there these were heading in the wrong place wrong direction. Those are the kinds of thoughts that he tried to stop. As he said, he would check them and, and curb them, keep them in line, the same way that a coward would beat his cows to keep them away from the rice plants for fear that they'd eat the rice. Thoughts that were motivated by renunciation, non-ill will, and harmlessness, those, he said, were okay. You didn't have to keep them in check. And then he further commented to himself that the kinds of thoughts you think become tendencies in the mind. They become easier and easier to think those thoughts, and those thoughts will lead to actions. So what kind of actions do you want to head toward? And so the principle of skillfulness comes in his teachings to Rahula. You look at the actions, why you're doing it, and when it's done, and see if it's causing any harm. While you're doing it, you stop. If it's not, you continue with it. But if it's caused harm after it's done, or you realize after it's done that it's caused harm, then you resolve not to repeat the mistake. So even though you thought the action was going to be harmless, maybe there was some delusion in there that you didn't realize. So you've got to keep checking things back and forth like this. Notice nowhere does it say the thought is to be judged by how it feels. Because there are some unskillful thoughts that really feel bad. 
but they're also skillful thoughts that create a lot of stress, especially when you have a strong urge to do something you know is unskillful. And it would be easy to us to go along with the urge. But you've got to put up a fight, and that's going to cause stress, and it's going to feel tense in your, in your breath, tense in the breath energy. But that's no gauge as to whether the thought is good or not. We can't just relax our way into nirvana. It's going to require some work. And again, this is one of the reasons why we try to get the mind into concentration, to give ourselves the strength we need in order to do that kind of work. The sense of well-being that allows us to say no to thoughts that otherwise would run right over us. Because one of the things those thoughts dangle in front of our faces is, here's going to be some pleasure and it's going to come right away. And if you don't have an alternative pleasure to withstand them, you're going to bound to give in, either openly or surreptitiously. In other words, sometimes you admit to yourself that you're getting it, giving in to something unskillful. And other times you learn how to tell yourself, no, it's not unskillful. You can come up with all kinds of justifications. So we work with the breath to create that sense of well-being that gives us strength. You know, it will sensitize us to disturbances in the mind. The more you get in touch with the breath energy in the body, the more you begin to see that the breath is a mirror for the mind. But we have to take more than just that sense of disturbance as our gauge for what's worth thinking and what's not. You have to think about where it's going. And again, sometimes the, the difficult thought or the difficult thing to do is going to be the right way. Remember John Lee's analogy for the, the relationship of the path to the goal. He said it's like distilling salt water to get fresh water. And as he notes, the fresh water is already there in the salt water. But if you just let it sit, it's not going to separate out. You have to apply the heat of the fire to the water, and that way you can distill it, get the, the fresh water out. You're not, it's not like you're creating fresh water, but it requires that effort to get the water out. In the same way that to find that element of the awareness that's unconditioned. It requires the effort of right effort and all the other factors of the past. So we get into the present moment to have a better perspective on what we're doing and actually to see more clearly what's going on. But the present moment isn't everything. You've got to think about where your decisions are going to lead. And get better and better reading what's happening in the mind right now is an indication of where your thoughts are going to lead. So you can develop an all-around skill so that your actions are good both in their motivation and in their consequences. That applies to thoughts as well, their actions too. <laughs>